stakes. Like what happens in the transition? Meaning when my golf club is moving from away from the target and then towards the target, what actually happens? So the first thing we got to know is can you hear us? Can you see us? Give us some thumbs up out there. Let us know because we want to make sure the audio is good. We want to make sure that you can hear us and that you can see us because this is live TV and we got to make sure that you can hear us and that we're ready to roll and things like that. So we've got some great things that we're going to be talking about here today. We're going to talk about three things that really happen in the transition. What are the, the most common mistakes, shall we call them, or situations that come up when we're actually moving from backswing to forward swing? So first of all, let's get some chats going in there. Give us a thumbs up if you can hear me. Give us a thumbs up if you can see us. Those types of things before we get rocking and rolling here, we want to make sure that everybody is out there and look, we got people logging on right now. And of course, you know, one of our favorite questions is, is we love hearing where you're from. We love hearing where you're from. So be sure to put that on there as well. Look at all the people jumping on. All right, here we go. Jordan says, it sounds good. Thank you, Jordy. I appreciate that. That's fantastic. Now, last week during the live sessions, we talked about the best ways to create club head speed. And we talked about three different ways to create some club head speed. And for those of you who were there, we had some really good discussions about those three things. And we covered that actually in the book, right? When we talk about the side to side, we call it lateral side to side. We talked about rotations and then we talked about verticals as well. Okay. And so we remember in our conversation that as we get older, okay, good. We got Tim is here. Fantastic. Tim, good to see you. Gene's here. We got people are logging in. Look at Tim's from the UK also. Hey. Let us know where you're from. Give us a thumbs up. We Nick and I, we got Nick behind the camera. Nick, give him the thumbs up. All right, we're coming in a little hot today because we had a lot of things going on this morning. We got some great content for you. Um, and so we're, we're just kind of getting in the groove here. So anyhow, we talked about those, so, those things, the rotations, the lateral side to sides, okay, and then the verticals. And remember that you use all three of them in your golf swing. I guarantee you have all three of those in your golf swing. But generally speaking, as we get a little bit older, the side to side is easier. And when we talked about that side to side, make sure that when that weight loads into your trail foot, that that weight stays on the inside of the foot, not the outside of the foot. Okay, fantastic. Look, we got another one from UK. We got Delaware. Okay, we got Illinois. Fantastic. We love hearing everybody come in. All right, now today we're talking about three things that happen in the transition. The transition, all right, once again, is that moment in time when the golf club moves, it's going away from the target, and now it starts going towards the target, right? It's that moment when it changes direction, we call that transition. Look, we got Las Vegas, all right, we got Michigan, uh, fantastic, we got Connecticut. Now, all right, number one, the most common thing, all right, well, I wouldn't say it's the most common thing, okay, but it's the first thing. Okay, it's the first thing would be poor contact. Okay, poor contact. When we have a bad transition, one of the things that I see in the lesson to you is poor contact. Now, why is that? And then how do we fix it? So you've learned if you've been following any of our stuff here at the vertical line swing and US golf TV and all those types of stuff there. And maybe Nick, throw in, the, throw in our website on there because some people might not know we also have a website. We have a website as well. But we've learned that the bottom of the swing or where the club hits the ground can be largely um, impacted by where the weight is on the feet. Okay, so we know that if my weight stays on my back foot, I'll tend to hit the ground behind the golf ball. Okay, if my weight goes forward, I tend to hit the ground a little bit more forward. So one of the first things you want to look for if you have poor contact, is that in the transition that your weight is going forward. That your weight is going forward. Okay, because when, I see this a lot, make a good backswing, but then in the transition, okay, we stay in our back foot. We saw that actually with one of our students, Jeff, we just saw that with Jeff, had a really narrow stance, okay, toes were square, had a narrow stance, toes were square, Big, strong guy, 6'4", strong guy, athletic, but had this narrow stance. So when he made his transition, and in his transition, his weight stayed on his back foot, and he would constantly hit behind it. 
So if you're struggling with contact, all right, you're hitting behind the golf ball or topping it, make sure your weight gets going forward. Now, how do you fix that? How do you fix that? Well, just simply when you finish your swing, make sure that your knees are touching. So when you finish your swing, make sure that your knees are nice and touching because if your knees are touching, your weight's got to go forward. All right? Making sense? All right, hey, be, be sure, for those of you who are just logging in, we got a bunch of people just logging in right now. Okay, we're just getting started. You're here at a good time. We're just getting started. Be sure to tell us where you're from. Give us a thumbs up that you can see us and hear us. We got Nick behind the keyboard. Nick, give him a thumbs up. Nick's there. He's rocking and rolling this morning. All right, we love hearing where you're from. And start throwing some questions in that chat too because we always save time at the end for questions. So the first thing in the transition is that if you're struggling with contact, make sure your waist's going forward. How do you check that? Just simply get your knees touching. All right? Get your knees touching. All right. Now, number two, all right, number two is for those of you out there, okay, who maybe struggle with slicing. So the first tip I gave you was on contact. This is on slicing. If you're slicing the golf ball or hitting the big fade, all right, it's very possible that in the transition, all right, I'm getting out the two iron here. There's the two iron. We talked about this every week. We don't hit a two iron anymore, but we keep it in the office because we just keep it here, <laughs> right? Because it's, it's just a club we used to be able to hit, but we can't hit anymore. So the other thing that can happen in the transition is the club face can move to an open position. So if you struggle with slicing, okay, this could be you. So we swing the club up here to the top, right? Everybody's up here at the top. All right, there we go, right? See it at the top position, all right? So I'm going to have Nick maybe adjust the camera there a little bit so we can see what's happening there. Okay, thank you, Nick. All right, so this, see the club face there? That would be closed. Everybody see that? This here would be open. Everybody can see that? Thank you, Nick. We got, see, this is why we got Nick behind the camera. That would be open. Close, watch the club face right here. Closed, open, closed, open. All right, everybody with me? Now, now this time watch my wrist. Closed, open, closed. All right, now there's a pretty world-class player whose wrist looks like this at the top. If you know who that is, throw it in the chat. Now, how does that tie into you? Well, if you are slicing the golf ball. I see a lot of amateur golfers in the transition, they rotate their wrist this way, okay, which opens the club face, all right? Okay, good, Tim. Spieth is one of them. Yes, 100%. Spieth has kind of got that look at the top. There's another guy um, who made a bunch of money because he went to play a different tour. He also has a position like that. If anybody knows who that is, throw that in the chat there as well. Tim's spot on there, though. Spieth is one of those guys. Now, Here's the simple drill that you can do. This is one of my favorite drills. Okay, DJ, thank you. Yes, that's my man. Look at these guys. These guys are on top of it, Nick. we got a very knowledgeable group. All right, so how do you practice that? Well, this is one of my favorite drills. I, I gave this to one of my tour pros years ago, and we just had great success. We just take a golf tee right there. Okay, got these fancy VLS golf tees. And I'm just going to take my golf glove, and I'm just going to put that tee right in between you can kind of see that right there. I'll bring it in. So everybody see where I've got that T right there? Okay, it's just sitting right in there. You can do this on any of your gloves. Okay, now, what this does is this T kind of creates awareness of my wrist angles, right? Okay, so the first thing I would do is just take it to the top and just feel like the T is pointing towards the sky. T to the sky. See that? Take it back. T to the sky. Back. See this guy, everybody see that? All right, because we just learned that in the transition, sometimes the club face moves to an open position, okay? I also showed you that the angle of your lead wrist has a huge impact on that, okay? All right, and so just practicing that. So take it to the top and just feel like the T is pointed towards the sky. Everybody see that? And that will definitely get the club face more square. Might even get it a little bit closed. Does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up if that's making sense. Also, for those of you who are just getting here, you're you're you are we're grateful you're here. Throw us in the chat where you're where you're coming from. 
where you're logging in from today. We love hearing all that. So we talked a little bit about poor contact, getting the weight forward. We talked a little bit about club face, keeping it squared up, making sure it's squared up with the T to the sky. All right? Okay? And then Nick's going to be, Nick's got some other stuff. I know he's going to be throwing some other stuff in the, oh, look at this. We got India. I mean, this is fantastic. We got India. Look at it. We got people from all over. Love it. All right. Now, what else? Nick's writing down some questions. Nick, what else? We got anything we're giving away this week or what do we, I mean, anything or what are we yeah, doing we here? The, we got the lost chapter in the chat. I'll throw it in there again. Okay. Right. Throw that in there. So Nick's going to throw in the lost chapter. Uh, that's free. We don't charge for that. But uh, I don't know how many of you, hopefully you've read the book. I don't know if you have. Okay, the bad lie. Okay, it's available on Amazon. That's where we get you know all of our stuff, the whole vertical line swing, all that's on there. And Nick's putting in. We have a lost chapter. It's a chapter that we wrote after the book was published, but it's free. You can get it. Nick just put it uh, in there. Now, I got to tell you this. Okay, in a couple weeks, March 26th, we're actually doing kind of something special. We're going to be doing uh, a Zoom call, all right? And it's free. There's no charge for it. It's free. But we're going to be talking about three things that we can learn from the great Jack Nicholas. We, I think he's the greatest golfer. I don't know. Some people say Tiger. I mean, it's a debate back and forth. Jordan, LeBron, I don't know. It depends upon when we first started watching the sports, but I, I like Jack Nicholas. But we're, I'm going to talk about three things that we can learn from Jack Nicholas. Okay, Nick's going to put that in the chat right there. It's free, uh, but we're going to do it via Zoom. You just have to register for it. Because a lot of the concepts that we built into and we developed in the vertical line swing, okay, a lot of those come from Jack Nicholas. All right, now let's talk about number one. Number one, the most common thing that we see in a poor transition is over the top. How many of you ever out there been told you come over the top? Huh? Probably a lot of you, right? Over the top. So what is over the top? Over the top is when I'm in the back position and my first move is my arms and hands go out and across. This would be over the top. Okay, over the top. Now, over the top can happen for a variety of reasons. And I'm going to give you a drill to work on this and fix this. But I've already laid out two of them. One of them is poor, uh, is poor uh, pressure movement, okay? Because even when I do that, even when I do that, just, all right, even when I do that, kind of wash my feet. When I'm here and I go out, where's my weight go? Where's my hips go? Back, right? When my weight goes back, the arms and hands go out, okay, versus forward. See? Forward. Boom. All right? And also... This just happened actually. I mean, this just happened actually with one of one of our students. The other the other reason is if the club face gets too open, if the club face is really open, people will come over the top. So how do we fix that? Well, we love this drill. We call it right knee, right field. Okay, so you can do it with an alignment rod. Okay, I got an alignment rod here. You can buy these at you know, you can buy them on our website if you want them. We leave some in two packs. Um, or you can just go to a hardware store and get an alignment rod. But at any rate, so we call it right knee, right field. Right knee, right field. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to share with you a nice little gem that I want you to write down, a little phrase that you can write down that can really help you if you slice a golf ball. And be sure to keep throwing in the comments there where you're from. If you're just logging on, throw it in the comments. Also questions you got, because I'm going to get to those questions here in just a second. All right, we call this drill right knee, right field. Right knee, right field. So all of us who grew up playing baseball or softball, okay, we all remember, right? Center field, left field, right field. So I'm going to take my hands and the alignment rod. I'm going to put my hands down by the ground. Or excuse me, my hands by my knee, alignment rod on the ground, starting at my right knee for a right-handed golfer. And I'm going to drag it and go up to right field. So my hands start at right knee or trail knee, and they go up into right field. Right knee, right field. Right knee, right field. And when I rotate my hands and move my hands towards right field, what happens is the club naturally drops from the inside. Okay? Make sense? Give me a thumbs up if that's making sense. So that would be the drill. So here's what we've learned so far. And then I got to give you this phrase that I want you to write down. We've got some great questions. Nick is writing down the questions over there like crazy. Okay. Now, here's what we've learned. The transition is when the club moves 
when it starts moving towards the target. So it's moving away from the target, then it goes towards the target, all right? Poor contact, you, you just, I hit behind it, I'm topping it, I'm not taking a divot, boom. First place you're looking, weight shift. Weight shift. As your weight goes forward, the bottom of the swing goes forward, contact improves. How do you check that? Pretty simple. Knees touch, get your knees to touch. Okay, some great other drills last week, okay, on some things about how to create more speed and more power that would also help with that, all right? The next one we talked about is open club face. Open club face, okay? The club face is open. You're probably gonna come over the top. You're gonna have a poor transition. So we just did the simple drill. We took a T, we put it in the glove like that. All right, easy, right? Okay, we created some awareness. T to the sky, T to the sky. And then Tim was talking about Jordan Spieth, which is fantastic. We had another one talk about DJ, Dustin Johnson, just creating some awareness of getting that club face squared up at the top. All right, and then the number one, the most common mistake that happens in the transition is over the top, over the top, okay? Arms and hands go out, and it, all right? How do you practice that? Little drill. Start at right knee, drag the alignment rod up to right field. Boom. Now, here's the phrase. This is a golden nugget. You're not going to hear this anywhere else. I want you to write this down. Here's the phrase, okay? Swing towards the curve. Swing towards the curve. All right, if you follow any of our stuff here, Nick's stuff, my stuff, all of our stuff here, Jordy, JT, all the whole team, if you follow any of our stuff, all right, you know we love simple phrases. We, this game is hard, but it doesn't need to be complicated. All right, so swing towards the curve. What does that mean? That means if the ball is curving to the right, you've got to swing to the right. The more I swing to the right, i.e. right knee, right field, as a right-handed golfer, the more the ball is going to draw. Okay? Swing towards the curve. All right, makes sense? We did, we got, we got one of our, on our website, I don't know if we still have it, do we have the, two, the uh, science of the slice stuff on there? Okay, so that would be something, so if, on our website, usgolftv.com, you'll see a spot where we, it's a, called Science of the Slice. If you slice the golf ball, go check that out. We got a whole like mini book on why people, why you slice and drills and all that. Some, it's some of our best content. It's right there. Nick's kind of looking it up right now. All right, now we're going to get into some questions here. and But also, I want to remind you that we can define or describe the golf swing in eight words. I talk about this every week because I'm passionate about this. We can describe or define the golf swing in eight words. If you know what it is, throw it in the chat. Share it with your friends because we want to keep this game simple. We want to keep it easy. And then we're going to come back to that. Nick, what's the first question that we've got? Yeah, so uh, Tim said, Tim from the UK said, uh, finds his contact and distance improves when he transitions to his left leg before finishing the back swing. And he throws our timing keys to work on that? Yeah, all right. So, great question. So, Tim from UK there, one of our favorite students. We love people from all over. And if you're just logging in right now, welcome. We're talking about transition, and we're talking about contact right now. Throw it in the chat where you're from, where you're from. Okay, so here's what we know. We know that the bottom of the swing tends to bottom out where the weight's at, okay? And what Tim was saying there is at the moment of impact, when his weight's more forward, his contact improves, his compression of the golf ball, 100%. That would, be the, that would be the case for all of us, okay? So a couple of things that you can do. Number one is you can, now that you know that, now that you have that information, you can just simply practice that position. You, can, you don't even have to hit a golf ball, just a little mini swing, okay, a little mini swing, and just, boom, see that? Just bump the ground. Get your weight in your front foot. Everybody see that? Versus, okay, a little bump. Boom, right there. That's, okay, it sounds simple. Sounds almost too elementary, but that can help. If you want to drill to hit a golf ball, what I would do is take out like a seven iron or an eight iron, put the ball on a tee, generally speaking at first, all right, and put your feet together, okay, back swing, and then on the downswing, just step towards the target and swing. Okay, so I'm here, back, step. Okay, and you can hit golf balls like that. That would help you move the weight forward 
and get you going towards the target. All right, what else we got, Nick? Let's throw in another, let's get another question in here. Okay, so the question. Okay, so the question is, is how do I get that look at the top? Great question, Manny. Thank you. How do I get that look at the top without rolling it? Okay, without rolling it. Now, so let's talk about that. If you follow the stuff in the vertical line swing, it's all in the book. All the stuff we've talked about right there. Okay, you know that in the takeaway, right? We want that club face right here to be at roughly about a forty-five degree angle, right? So this would be, eh, let me get the two iron out. Let's use the two iron, Nick. All right, let's get the two iron because it's a little bit, it's a little bit easier to see. All right, club face. We're talking about club face angle right here. This club face angle. When we take the club back, okay, we want that club face angle right here to be at about a 45 degree angle. This would be straight up and this would be open. That would be bad. This would be closed. That would be bad too. We want that club at about a 45 degree angle. All right, so here's the tip that I would give you. Let's go back to the T. This is a great question. This is a great question, all right? We're gonna take that T. If you're just, if you're just jumping on, we took a golf T, we put it in there, it looks like that. All right, here we go, Manny, here's what we're gonna do. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that golf T and we're gonna keep the T looking at the golf ball. See that? T looking at the golf ball. Here's my golf ball. If that T is looking at the golf ball, you're not rotating it. It might be hard to see there right now, but there's the T. See how it's, there it is. See that? See, T is looking at the golf ball. Nick zooming in there. Best cameraman in the golf business right there. Zooming in. See that, folks? Then you're not rolling it, man. So that's how I would feel that. So I would go, we'd work with the phrase, right? We love phrases, right? I would say, all right, man, here we go. Give me T to the ball. And then give me T to the sky. And we do it again. You know we love the three setters. T to the ball, T to the sky. T to the ball, T to the sky. T to the ball, T to the sky. Boom. That's how you would keep it from rolling. That's a great question. That right there, folks, Manny just asked probably the best question I've heard in a long time. That right there is your golf swing and your takeaway. Okay. Now we're going to get a couple more questions here, but just for those of you just jumping on now, um, on March 26th, we're going to have uh, Nick put that link in there again because some of you are just getting on here. We're going to do a special thing where we're doing a Zoom. Okay, it's free, but you do have to register for it. And we're going to talk about the three things that we can learn from the great Jack Nicholas. The three things that we can learn from the great Jack Nicholas. Um, because I think he's the greatest golfer of all time. And a lot of the concepts that we put in the vertical line swing were based around his golf swing. He had a pretty good career. Late into his career, one of the masters is coming up here in a couple of weeks, I think at age 46, which is fantastic. So Nick's uh, throwing that in there as well. All right, let's get into another question. For those of you just jumping on, look at this. we got people from all over. When you just get here, please give us a thumbs up. Put it in the chat where you're from because it's kind of fun for other people also to see where all of these fantastic golfers are coming from. So Nick, what else we got? Uh, Jody says, um, struggling with... Uh, weight transition, any tips for older golfers with two joint replacements? Wow, okay, this is a great question. Thank you, Jody. So what Jody's asking there is really struggling with weight shift, really struggling with weight shift. And then, by the way, did anybody get the eight words down, Nick? Did anybody put that uh, in there? I believe Tim said a, an abbreviated version. Okay, good. That way, Tim. So back to the original question I asked, we can describe the golf swing in eight words, simplicity, we want simplicity. Okay, and let's talk about that, and then we're going to, and then I'm, we're going to talk about the question there about weight shift, all right? So here, in eight words, is the golf swing. The arms, arms take it up, okay? Body takes it around. So in every golf swing, there's some up and there's some around. You have it in your golf swing. Some of you have more up and less around. Most of you have more around and not enough up. All right, arms take it up, body takes it around. So if you're completely lost on your golf swing, completely lost, and this happens from time to time, this is what I would have you do. You're like, I don't know what to do, Nick or Todd, I'm completely lost. I would just say, hey, get set up, arms take it up. Notice this, arms just take it up, and then pivot takes it around, boom. 
There's the golf swing. That looks like a pretty darn good position to me. And those are some of the things we're going to talk about in that Zoom call with Jack Nicholas, or what lessons we can learn. I wish we had Jack Nicholas coming in. <laughs> we would get a lot of people registered if we had Jack Nicholas, but it's just going to be Todd and Nick. Sorry, but we're going to talk about Jack Nicholas. Now, the question is, is how do I work on weight shift when I've, when I've had a, uh, I got a knee replaced or a hip replaced? What do I do? So a couple concepts. We cover all this in the book, The Bad Lie. But number one is I like a little wider stance. Okay, I think a little wider stance is good for, for, for us as experienced golfers because it provides more stability. Okay, if you do not feel stable, you're not going to swing as fast as you're capable of swinging. Think about it. You're walking on the sidewalk. And it's kind of wet or it's there's a little bit of ice. Okay, if you have any intelligence at all, you're not picking your speed up. You're slowing down because the surface is unsettling. Okay, so if we have a little wider stance and then we secondly take our toes and point them out. See that? Okay, I got my square shoes on here. Bob sent me these shoes. These are fantastic. If you struggle with balance, check out squares. Their shoes, they're actually really good. Okay, they really actually help with balance. Okay, so wider stance, toes out. Okay, that would be what I would do from a base standpoint. Then you need some ways to practice it. You need some ways to practice. So let me give you three different things. You don't even have to swing a golf club when you do this. You can just do this at the living room at home when you're watching golf on TV because you're working on movement patterns. Okay, so it could be something like this feet, just put my feet together. And I'm just going to step to the right and swing my arms up. Boom. Boom. See that? That's simple, right? Boom. Do a couple of those, right? Little three-setter. Now I got my feet together. Now I go the other direction. Step towards the target. Step towards the target. Boom. Okay? So a little wider stance, toes out, little steps, not even swinging a golf club. And then, of course, my favorite drill of all time, okay, is the right-left drill where you swing the club in continuous motion. That can also help you. Okay, and that, and that, for those of you who haven't seen it, okay, is simply when the club is in continuous motion, it'll want to find balance. The club will want to find balance, and your body will want to find balance. Okay, so we just swing the club, and when we swing it to the right, it's just right, left, right, left, right, left. Just smooth, rhythmic swings, but the club is in continuous motion. You'll see your pivot improve and all those types of stuff. All right, let's get into a couple more questions. And then uh, what else we got, Nick? Yeah, so uh, Jeff asked me, he's got problems with balance. Uh, where should the weight be on the trail foot in the transition? Okay, so the question is, is where should the weight be in the transition? Okay, let's talk a little bit about that. And then let's make sure we're putting in there. What else? Are, we, are we giving? Oh, the lost chapter. Let's throw that back in there because some of you just got here. All right, we always like to give people some stuff. So the lost chapter is content, all right, that we wrote after the book came out. That was important, but we kind of forgot about it, so we put it in that. It's free, no charge for that. Okay. Now, um, where should the weight be? All right. So we all know this that in the setup, we love the 60-40, right? We start with 60 on the front, 40 in the back. We know that. And then early in the backswing, we're shifting that weight and moving that weight and moving that pressure, okay, towards the trail foot. All right, we're moving it towards the trail foot. Now, where should that weight be, okay, at the top of the backswing and in the transition? If you slice, if you slice, you want to feel like that weight is on your right foot or your trail foot, right foot for a right-handed golfer, okay, that it's on the inside of the heel. It's right back here. It's on the inside of the back heel, okay? And then early on, it starts moving towards the front foot. Okay, starts moving towards the front foot, and it actually goes more towards the ball of the foot, technically. That's getting a little deep, but here's what I want you to feel. Is I want you to feel a nice big hip turn. I want you to release the trail leg, and I want you to feel like that weight is on the inside of your trail heel. heel. If you do that, it's going to help your contact, your distance, and certainly slicing. All right, now let's get into another question here. And if you're just getting here, okay, we're talking about we're talking about transition mistakes. What happens in the transition? Okay, and also be sure to tell us where you're from. If you just got here, put it in the chat. Give us a thumbs up. 
it's fun to kind of hear where everybody's logging in from. So, Nick, what else we got? Uh, Tim asks, when tr transitioning to your left foot, what are the pros and cons of your weight going to the front or back of the left foot? Okay, so the question there is, when we all know this, right, that we want the weight going forward. We want the weight going forward through the strike, okay? So where do we want that weight to be? Well, ideally, you want it to really move towards the center of the foot, okay? You want it to, to the center of the foot. You don't really want it out on your toe, okay? I don't think you really want it back on your heel because that's going to cause you to kind of come work backwards. You want that in the center of the foot. Now, what I have found, okay, is, is that – when we just create patterns, when I just start stepping this way and swing it up, all right, and I start just stepping towards the target, even if I'm not hitting a golf ball, my human reaction, my subconscious is going to help me plant and place that weight on, the, on my foot where it should be. You would never just instinctively, like, go to your toe or go to your heel. Now, when we get out of a golf club, we put a ball down there. Sometimes we do that. So I think the best way is to just simply create these little patterns and just have some awareness of where that weight is at, okay, and where it's going. All right, so let's get into another question. Let's get into one more question, okay, and we're going to, just as a reminder, for those of you who are just getting here, because I see a bunch of people just logging in right now. I can see the numbers going up, which is fantastic. March 26, all right, we're going to do a, a, a Zoom. It's free. You do have to register. Okay, because we want to know who's there. And we're going to talk about three things that we can learn from, the, from Jack Nicholas. And what I can tell you is a lot of those things are in the book right here, The Bad Lie, which, of course, you can find on Amazon and all that type of stuff to help you play better golf. So Nick's putting that in the chat right now uh, for those uh, who, who want, to, um, want to dive into that. All right, let's get into one more question here, Nick. What else we got? Okay, this is a great question. So, all right, at impact, I've got that little bit of a bowed wrist, okay? That little bit of bowed, what they call bowed wrist. Now, after impact, that starts to release. Okay, so one of the beautiful things here, let's come back. Let's get the glove back out. This is the great part of being live. Hey, I hope you're liking this stuff. You know, I hope you're liking this stuff. You know, next week we're going to be talking about situational golf. So what does that mean? Well, situational golf is golf. It's real golf, meaning what do I do if the ball's above my feet? What do I do if it's below my feet? What do I do if the grass is really long? How do I hit a fairway bunker shot? Okay. Um, what do I do if I have a shot and it's into the wind and it's like really windy? Or what if it's downwind? So what we're going to be talking about is situations. This, that's golf. I mean, golf is not standing on a driving range just, you know, hitting seven irons off a perfect lie. So it's probably one of our best things. We're going to be doing that next week here at the same time, you know, same place. So let's go back to this question that Manny was asking there. So we got the T, right? So what I like to do is you asked that great question earlier. So we'd have the T point towards the golf ball. All right. So here we go. Let's grab our golf ball. We'll get set in there. Okay. So when we take it away, the T kind of points towards the golf ball. Boom. You can see that right there. I'm just going to do it with my lead hand only so everybody can see the T. It looks like it's pointing at the golf ball, right? Boom. Okay. And then the tee goes towards the sky. Boom. And then the tee comes back at the ball. Okay. And now after impact, then it definitely starts to release a little bit this way. Okay. Definitely starts to release and work up. Now, what I will tell you is this, is, is that in my experience of 30 years of coaching golf, from tour professionals who won major championships to people who have never played the game, is, is that. 80% of the problems happen in the takeaway before, before the hands even get to waist high. The, the next probably 15% happen from waist high to the top and maybe 5%, 10 happen in the transition or down to impact. So people see things in impact that they don't like. They see ball flight that they don't like. They see finished positions that they don't like. But the fix is early. It's in setup. It's in grip. It's in takeaway. That's 80% of it. From here up to here is probably another 10 or 15%. And then the rest of the stuff kind of takes care of itself. 
All right, now let's throw these chats. Let's throw a couple things in the chat here again real quick. So next week we're talking about situational golf. All right, put that Zoom link in there, Nick. March 26th, we're going to be talking about Jack Nicklaus. What are some of the things that we can learn from Jack Nicklaus? Last week in our session, listen, we've got literally over 17,000 views in a week. It's just been crazy. We talked about ways to create club head speed, the verticals, the rotations, and the side-to-sides. Okay, we, that was fantastic. This week we're talking about over-the-top transition mistakes. Okay, next week we're talking about situational golf. What do we do on uphill lies, downhill lies, ball above my feet, ball below my feet, fairway bunker, greenside bunker, all of these types of shots that we have that we want to help you play better golf. And then, of course, on March 26th, we're doing the Zoom call. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you had fun. And always remember, you don't have to swing like a tour pro to play great golf.